Hello, and welcome to the first video of my updated Breath of the Wild speedrun tutorial series inspired by the original Limb Cube series that'll teach you everything you need to know to run this game's any percent category, which is where you aim to beat the game as fast as possible. For Breath of the Wild, this includes completing the Great Plateau, which cannot be skipped due to the way the game is coded, and heading straight to the castle for the final fights. Whether or not you plan to run using amiibos, the videos in this series will explain all the essential information and glitches you'll need to speedrun Breath of the Wild and start getting good times. This first video will give you a rundown of every tool you'll need to have at your disposal. Throughout the rest of the series, we'll completely cover the bomb's first routing through the Great Plateau, and once we get to the castle, we'll go over all the different ways the route can branch off from there and why. And you'll be able to decide which castle routing works best for you. Be aware, some of these strategies are difficult and many of the button presses feel awkward at first. They'll require dedication and practice to learn, but soon enough they'll become second nature and you'll be having an exciting time running around to save Hyrule. There will be timestamps in the description of each video if you ever need to come back to refresh on something specific as you learn and the muscle memory starts to build, but if you're completely new to the strats for this game, you might want to just bust out the notebook your first time watching these videos and watch them from the beginning all the way through. As of January 2022, versions 1.5 on the Wii U and 1.6 on the Switch are the current and only versions accepted in runs submitted to speedrun.com. If you do intend to submit runs to the leaderboards, the title of the screen with the version in the bottom right corner must be shown in your video before the new game is selected. Running a digital copy of the game on the Nintendo Switch is the fastest way to play. Although some runners use Joy-Cons when starting out or because they prefer them for certain tricks, a Nintendo Pro Controller makes running this game significantly easier and more comfortable. I recommend playing with gyro aiming enabled and camera speed set to very fast. These options allow you to make faster setups for various tricks throughout the run. French text and voice acting, specifically European French, are the fastest settings and will save you about 4 seconds over playing in English. I've had runs break minute barriers by less than that, and you probably will too. To make the change, go to your system settings, scroll all the way down to system, and then select language and region. Change language to French and region to Europe. You will need to restart in order for these changes to take place. To time your runs, I recommend Live Split. It's a free program, it's super customizable, and it's what almost every speedrunner uses to track their progress. Link for that is also in the description. Because you want both hands on the controller at the same moment when the run begins, most people set their timer to a negative value and start it early. I prefer to start mine at negative one second and start it right as the screen fades to full black after skipping the cutscene. I've seen many people start at negative 1.5 seconds and start the timer at the exact same moment they press plus to skip the cutscene. As you run through the overworld, you'll need to manage your stamina accordingly. Along with paying attention to the lines you run and your menuing, which we'll talk a lot about later, it's one of the most important things you can always bear in mind throughout your runs. As Ling sprints, his stamina depletes and needs to cool down. Fortunately, there are two ways to not have to slow down to a jog while we wait. The first is whistle sprinting, and it's one of the easiest tricks in the game, and the first one that I ever learned. It's a way of not only sprinting infinitely at about 80% of the full speed, but also refilling your stamina while doing so. It's performed by holding down the D-pad, your whistle button, and then mashing B, your sprint button, while holding the control stick in whichever direction you'd like Link to go. While doing this, you'll notice right away that to do it effectively, you'll have to become comfortable with what's known as claw gripping. It's essential to master the movement for whistle sprinting, if nothing else, and can be considered optional other than that but it will make you a better runner of the game to push through the awkward phase of this hand position until it becomes second nature. Whistle sprinting does have one drawback, however, and that is that it makes a lot of noise. Fortunately, the second way to manage our stamina is much more silent. Throw sprinting is a stealthy way to run at the same speed as whistle sprinting for times when you don't want to alert nearby enemies but still need to be on the move and manage your stamina. To perform this glitch, you start by mashing R and B simultaneously. This alone will get you the desired effect well enough if you're not ready for the claw grip, but the stamina replenishment will be inconsistent. To get a consistent refill on the stamina wheel, after beginning to mash R and B to get the throw sprint started, press and hold down on the D-pad. 
the throwing animation will start making a slightly different noise and your stamina will refill perfectly every single time. To stay silent, it's also important to let off of the D-pad before you stop mashing R and B. Otherwise, Link will whistle and alert any NPCs in the area, which depending on your situation could end up being a run killer. Having a shield is essential for so many tricks in this run, and it's the first tool we pick up on the route. Besides usefulness with glitches and parry attacks, we can also use shields to move faster and jump farther. Shield surfing is useful for smoothly moving down a slope faster than sprinting without using any stamina. To do this, simply hold ZL, your shield button, press X to jump, and roll your thumb down to A to do a mid-air flip, landing the shield under Link's feet to start surfing. Also, you can use a mid-air shield jump to essentially get a double jump for times when you need to clear large gaps in several places throughout the run. You do this by running and jumping regularly, and then mid-air, you hold ZL and roll your thumb down to A. If you ever mismanage your stamina, it's good to know that you can take out the shield and run with it, and this is slightly faster than the tired out running animation that Link does when the stamina wheel is recharging from red. There are several instances throughout the Great Plateau where Link is falling from too high to survive with only three hearts, and of course we don't yet have the paraglider. Fortunately, there's a glitch that cancels taking damage from any height. While falling, you want to press and hold R to start throw aiming any weapon. On your runs in practice, it'll be the Boko Spear. You do this until you're within a safe height to fall from. You then let go of R to start throwing your weapon, but immediately press left on the D-pad to bring up your shield menu and either equip or unequip. This will cancel the throwing animation and also trick the game into thinking that your initial falling position was much lower to the ground than it actually was, resulting in a safe landing. When you make it to the fights, you'll have some claymores which can be used for spin attacks. To get more hits faster, try turning your back towards an enemy, pulling out your weapon by pressing Y, and then starting a spin attack by pressing and holding Y. If you move your control stick back towards the enemy, and keep Link's back facing towards the enemy, you should start getting two hits per swing instead of just one. This is extremely useful during the fights. There are two methods of clipping through walls in this game. First, there are scope clips, which simply involve tucking Link into a corner, setting a correct position for him to face, and then pressing R3, the right thumbstick, to pull up the scope feature. We'll go over the specifics on that starting in the next video, as a scope clip is the very first main trick you'll have to get past on your runs. The other way to clip through walls is called shield clipping, and it requires a bit more explanation and setup. To start, you must first perform a shield jump and land with your shield on a sloped surface. This is called setting skew. Skew is a weird animation that happens in the middle of a shield jump after you've landed on a sloped surface. If you hear the shield make a kind of crunch sound and see Link slide down the surface after setting the skew, this is a good sign that you did it properly. You can test to see if you have skew by doing a forward shield jump and quickly unequipping your shield so that Link lands on his feet. And if you see Link jut out side to side, out of regular position, and then back again, you'll know you have successfully set skew. Now you can line up your position close to the wall you want to go through, do an instant shield jump, and quickly unequip your shield. If done properly, the game will think Link is on the other side of the wall due to the wonky animation glitch and we'll try to correct his position by pushing him all the way through. Again, we'll go over more details in the upcoming videos when we're going over the specific clips and setups for each wall that we want to go through, and we will also touch on the extended shield clip, which allows you to pass through even thicker walls than these normal shield clips. Setting skew does do damage to your shield. In an emergency pinch, there is a way to set skew without taking a hit of durability. This is useful if you're afraid that your pot lid may shatter early in the run, but it's still going well enough to not reset. To cancel shield durability damage, start your shield jump for skew setting, and very quickly unequip and then re-equip your shield. If done properly, it will re-equip still under Link's feet, and he'll still land to set skew. The Bowlift Smuggle Slide, or BLSS for short, is a way of kind of jetpacking through the air without using any stamina, and it's had an enormous impact on Breath of the Wild speedrunning. To do it, 
Hold ZL to keep your shield out and stand in front of a liftable object. For any percent, we'll use a clay pot and our remote bombs. Instead of picking an item up simply by tapping A, you want to tap ZR and then A in a very quick succession so that Link goes for his bow but then tries to pick up the item. If you did it right, Link will be holding both above his head. Now that Link's holding both the bow and an item above his head, you can let go of all buttons if it's easier for you. Some people prefer holding ZL through the entirety of this setup. I've been told that it helps Link with not dropping the item in the next step that we're about to go over, but I've not noticed this myself in practice, so it is definitely optional. To finish the setup, you want to jump, and while Link is in the air, you want to press B to put the bow away, and then immediately press plus to go into the pause menu. This is an extremely rapid button press sequence. The window between jumping and pressing B is easy, but the window between B and plus is tight. If you're too slow with pressing B and going into the pause menu, Link will drop the item on the ground and you'll have to start the setup again from the top. If you press pause before pressing B, you can simply unpause, jump, and try again. And if you did it right, you'll notice in the background of the pause menu that Link has the item in his right hand, he's about to drop it, but it's still in his hand. This is what you want. Now, in the pause menu, go to the shields page and unequip the pot lid. Unpause, hold ZR one more time to pull out the bow, and press B to cancel your aim. If Link is holding the item and the arrow in his right hand, and the bow in his left, you're ready to take flight. Now simply press and hold B while running towards a small ledge that Link can step up onto. And if done properly, Link will start sliding across the sky. Do not let go of B or let the control stick go in the neutral position or the trick will fail. To steer and accelerate, you want to wiggle Link using the left control stick and maneuver the camera angle with the right control stick. Wiggling builds speed by pushing the item in Link's hand into him, which sends him moving backwards. Turning the camera so that Link is facing towards it will help steer the camera in the intended direction while wiggling. You can turn Link around to face the direction that you're accelerated in for an extra little boost of speed when you are not wiggling. It will take some time to get used to the flight controls, but they're not anything crazy once you understand the mechanics of BLSS, and this is one of the easier tricks to pull off, and it's extremely fun as well. Doing a bullet time bounce, or BTB, however, is a little more tricky. They used to be a mandatory staple in Breath of the Wild speedruns, but now for any percent, doing a BTB is totally optional since the discovery of BLSS. This glitch tricks the game into speeding up Link's movement nearly 20 times by manipulating bullet time using the bow. Basically, while falling towards a weak enemy like the Red Bokoblins, you can pull out your bow to enter bullet time, and immediately after making contact with the Boko, put your bow away to leave bullet time, and this will launch Link across the plateau. It will require fall damage cancel to survive, and we'll go over the specifics of the only remaining BTB in the route in part 5 of this series. For now, all you need to know is that the trick itself is actually not that difficult, what makes it more challenging in the run is getting the precise angle and distance that you need to get where you need to go. Now that the Bomb Shrine is our first destination, it's essential to become as comfortable as possible with Wind Bombs. Wind Bombs are a super consistent trick, but the button inputs are super awkward at first. Don't worry, it all starts to click really fast, and it's really satisfying when you first start being able to launch Link around using the bombs consistently. The four types of wind bombs you'll see in any percent are standard front hop wind bombs, turn wind bombs, tree wind bombs, and midair wind bombs. The most important in any percent being standard front hop wind bombs and the tree wind bomb. To do a basic front hop wind bomb, stand in front of a spot where Link can leap forward and get bullet time. While holding ZL, press forward on the control stick and X to jump forward, and then quickly press L, ZR, and then press and hold up on the D-pad to bring up your runes menu 
and switch to square bombs. For this basic setup, drop your square bomb when you see Link's feet are about even, and then quickly switch back to circle bombs and detonate. This should send Link flying across the sky, but there are many ways that it could go wrong. We'll obviously go into each one more as we get to them later in the run, but if you want a couple of awesome videos that dive deep on wind bombs and how to really truly understand them, I've linked Vivor's basic and advanced wind bomb tutorials in the description below. The final trick you should know before we get started is how to clear your glitched ragdoll state. When you click walls, you will also enter a state that is about 99% sure to fail your wind bombs on the spot. You can lose this glitched ragdoll state several ways, most easily by actually ragdolling, either by jumping on your shield and unequipping it on the last frame as it's touching the ground, or by blowing yourself up with one of your bombs if you have three hearts and you're about to get fully healed at the end of a shrine. Alternatively, you can also do a shield jump and unequip your shield on either one of the two frames of skew animation where Link is jutting out side to side. Understand though that this solution will not only clear your glitch ragdoll, it will also clear your skew. If you plan to run using amiibos, the amiibos you want are Toon Link from Wind Waker, which comes with an assortment of fish, Mifa, who also summons an assortment of fish, no surprise there, Young Link from Smash Brothers will get you a range of fish and royal weaponry or arrows, Archer Link will drop a random assortment of meat, fish, and regular arrows. Link's Awakening Link registers as a generic amiibo in Breath of the Wild, which gives generic gifts, weaponry, similar to the Young Link amiibo. So you will be getting fish and royal weaponry with this amiibo as well. The fish you want are Mighty Porgies, Mighty Carp, and Hyrule Bass are super useful to finish up your recipes or as backup food. At minimum, you want at least three ingredients that give the attack up power, this will get you a basic three and a half minute three up attack potion. A recipe with four attack up items will get you at least three minutes and 50 seconds of three up attack power. And a recipe with all five fish being mighty fish will get you four minutes and 10 seconds of attack up power at minimum. If you do not get good enough scans, you can also go for a razor shroom at castle. It is 100% guaranteed to be there and on your way and the mushroom and both fish all have equal properties as far as making your food go up in attack power and time if you are lucky the rng will also give you a critical meal which for example can take a recipe that has only three attack up ingredients and boost it from three and a half minutes up to eight and a half minutes of attack up power and that's everything you absolutely need to know to run this game. I plan on making more follow-up videos of more advanced subtleties of the run, especially if there's demand for it after this series is complete. So if there's anything you feel still isn't clear, please post a comment below or go and join the Breath of the Wild speedrun Discord community. I've also linked that in the description. There are super helpful people over there as well. Please leave a thumbs up if you found value in this video. Subscribe for more content like this. And come find me on Twitch if you want to see me doing live uncut runs of any percent as I try to grind my PB as low as possible. I hope to see you again real soon. And until next time, stay well, stay cool, and always keep punching out there. Aloha.